What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're doing over the wire war games. And again with Natus. Um so we reached level 17. Today we're gonna do the level 17 and rem reminding you guys that these challenges are challenges to test your web application penetration testing skills, namely um, cross site scripting, exploding cross site scripting. Uh, cross site request forgery, injections, SQL injections, so on and so forth. So, when we open the challenge page, we have an input box that as assumingly checks whether the username that we provide exists or not. So, since we are pursuing to get the password for the next level, namely for the username Negris18, so we're going to check if Negris18 exists check existence but we have got no feedback from the application previously in previous challenges we uh, we were getting feedback from the web application that we used to determine the nature of the injection so we used um, SQL injections that are based on boolean expressions true or false and we also used error-based SQL injections but today it looks like there is no feedback from the web application regarding whether the input that we provide exists or true or, or false so we get curious enough to check the source code and we see as always guys we have the check for the username above of the previous level and then we have a query that connects to the database and a query that's executed but the, the thing is when we get to the line where we check if does it exist or not as you can see the echo is commented out which means no matter what input we provide to the application we're not going to get feedback which means neither error based or boolean based sql injections will uh, will work so we have to resort to another type of SQL injection, which is time-paced SQL injection. So in time-paced SQL injection, as you can see, we rely on the time the web server takes to send a response back to us. So the web server takes a specific time to respond back to the client, which is us. So if we trick, trick the web server, okay, to spend some time while sending the response back, we can somehow um, deduce the behavior. For example, if the web server takes um, two seconds to respond, or if the web server takes si six seconds to, response, uh, to respond back, uh, we can take two different directions based on that. So we can define a number of seconds in the SQL query that the server takes at the same time to respond, we conclude that it is vulnerable to SQL injection. As you can see, we use the sleep function. So if you use a query like this one, okay, and the server exactly takes five seconds to respond back, this means that this SQL query is true. Okay, and if it doesn't take five seconds to respond, this means that SQL query uh, would not work. Okay. So in the example of today, we're going to take this one because here we are checking whether the username exists. So we're going to go back and we're going to use a query such as this one. So here we use select from users, assuming that the table that holds the user uh, information is users. Where username here, we're going to use natus18 and password like binary. And here we use, as you can see, it's like the previous challenge. Okay. So we use the like uh, to guess the password, okay? Because we don't know the password, so we have to guess the characters of the password using the like statement. And sleep ten, okay? So here, if the username exists, which is it's eighteen, we know it does. And if the password starts or contain the letter A, all right. Uh, we're gonna tell the application to sleep 10 seconds. If it sleeps 10 seconds, or if it takes 10 seconds to respond back, we know that this query is correct. And we know that, then it is that it exists, and yeah, A, or number A, or the letter A, 
uh, exists as part of the password. So let's try this and see if the server uh, takes 10 seconds to respawn back. So check. As you can see, it responded, it responded immediately, which means that something is wrong with the query. Either Netis18 doesn't exist or the password doesn't contain the letter A. Okay, so since I know the password, so cat Netis16. So this is the password, but we're gonna use the uh, 8 as a number okay, to trigger a valid response. So here we're gonna say that if the password starts with 8, we're going to tell the application to sleep for 10 seconds. So this is not just a testing to, do, to demonstrate that when the query is correct or when the conditions are met, the application will sleep 10 seconds. And this, is, this will be the basis of building the exploitation script. So if you go back here, oh, here, okay, and use this, as you can see, it took some second, but I, I don't think it's ten. So it's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna modify this to five and see if it works. So yes, as you can see, it's taking some time to respond. Yeah. So after five seconds, the server responded back. So this means that both conditions, Navis eighteen, and the password like eight, are met. So Navis eighteen exists, and eight is the first. <coughs> character of the password. Alright, if we try with 9 and uh, we send this as you can see the server responded immediately and did not execute the sleep function which means that 9 is not the start of the password knowing that it is that it exists. Okay, so okay, so what do we do? We're gonna now <coughs> build a script that iterates why we do a script here because we don't know the password we have to guess the password we have we just we, we still have to rely on the like statement because we want to uh, guess the uh, password so let's go back to the script and check it out so we start with important requests and basic authentication because we want the script to authenticate using the previous levels information and then start the um, uh, next level so here as you can see we have two for loops much like the previous challenges if you have been following them on my youtube channel so first we have the all characters list that contains all of the characters uppercase lowercase and numbers because we know that the password of all the uh, levels uh, consists only of lowercase uppercase letters and numbers there are no symbols if there are symbols the case will be different or we will have to we'd have uh, uh, needed to put them here so the first for loop here will iterate through the all characters and will build a list of valid characters what are the valid characters here they will be put in filtered characters so our aim here is to find the characters that really compose the password based on what based on the sleep function so here i used as you can see these are url encoded so here it is 18 as you can see this one is double quotes in the sleep function this is the uh, left parenthesis and this is the right parenthesis and this is the three three is three seconds so if the application sleeps for three seconds or more in the if statement, we knew that the characters that we sent or we tested here are part of the password. So we built filtered characters uh, list to contain only the characters that compose the password. But we, st we are still not done yet. We have to know the correct order of these characters to guess the password. So we do the, the second for loop here. So we know, th we know beforehand that the, old, the password of the old levels consists of 32 characters. So we need a for loop or two for loops, one to iterate th through 32 characters and other one to iterate through the list that we have built earlier. Again, we use the sleep with three seconds. So we try the, the, the uh, array of folded characters using the sleep and thus we will know here through the if statement if the application 
sleeps for more than three three or more than three we knew that the password that we sent as part of the filters characters or the uh, the word the characters that's part of this array is the correct uh, character for the password so let's test this one and see So here we start, right? We start guessing the correct characters that compose the password. So these characters, as you can see, are part, or these letters are part of the password. But these words do not, or these characters do not reflect the correct order of the password. Here we are just guessing the uh, correct characters or correct letters up for now so take a look at this this was the finishing line of the first for loop and this reflects the characters that compose the password but not in the correct order right oh we have a problem connection reset by peer so this as you can see will go on until we get the correct orders of these characters so now, if we just get the password, let's see what the password. So this is the password, right? We're gonna have this here over here, and connect again, but this time to native seventeen. And most probably it's gonna ask for a password. It didn't ask because I have logged in previously to this level. So that was it, guys. In the upcoming videos of Over the Wire, we're gonna uh, talk about le level 18, I guess, this level. So we'll be on level 18. So that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you later.